Thank you so much for tuning in. This is going to be Medical Abbreviations Part 3. Before we jump in, just wanted to ask you to like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff, and follow us on Twitter. Some of these abbreviations are going to be a little bit more tricky, and they're going to be more focused on diseases, because most of the really important ones we've covered in the last few videos. So without further ado, let's begin. ARF is acute renal failure. That means that your kidneys are going into failure because of something uh, acute or something going on right now, not long term. AAA is abdominal aortic aneurysm. This is a picture of your abdominal aorta. As you can see, it's really big. And an aneurysm is a ballooning and a potential popping of that. So you could imagine the complications if that were to burst. AKA is our next one. It's not also known as. It's above the knee amputation. And then BKA, below the knee amputation. ABO refers to blood types. I made a video in the past on blood types. We have type A, type AB, type B, and then O, and then positive or negative. So that's why we go ABO. ADL, activity of daily living. That's like you're showering, you're brushing your teeth, everything that you do for yourself. And then CA is cancer. And METS is metastasizing. So when cancer moves from the one local spot, it moves to other places in the body. That's metastasizing. C slash O is complaining of. CHF, congestive heart failure. Again, I made a video on that. COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. DVT, deep vein thrombosis. That's when you get a blood clot in your deep vein. ETOH, it's referred to as alcohol or ethanol alcohol. Often we see that if somebody is in alcohol withdrawal, it'll just say ETOH instead of writing alcohol. FX is fracture. And then the pound, it's not a hashtag, it's a pound. It's actually fracture as well. We use both for some reason, I don't know. HTN is high blood pressure or hypertension actually. That's why they have that uh, strange abbreviation. NSR is normal sinus rhythm. Normal sinus rhythm is uh, your regular heart rhythm. So you'll probably see this picture that I'll put up right here. That's a heart rate monitor. That's a normal sinus rhythm. That's a regular rhythm. And then this one is AFib or atrial fibrillation, which is a different type of heart rhythm. VFib, ventricular fibrillation. Again, a different heart rhythm. VT ventricular tachycardia. PMI is point of maximum impulse. This also has to do with the heart. It has to do when you're listening to the heart. It's the point on the chest where the heart sounds the loudest. Now these next ones are going to be helpful if you are familiar with chemistry and the periodic table. So K is potassium. It's an electrolyte. And A, sodium. CA we see again. And this is calcium. This is where context matters. If you're reading a doctor's order and the order has a bunch of lab work written down and then CA, you know he's not ordering cancer. He's ordering a calcium level. So again, context does matter and it's up to you to sort of figure that out. Mg, magnesium. KCl, potassium chloride. That um, usually has to do with uh, s solutions, like IV solutions, if you're giving them fluid. They'll order normal saline with 40 KCL or 20 KCL potentially. VSA is vital signs absent. This uh, is common in eMERGE. If somebody is essentially dead um, before coming in uh, with the ambulance, no blood pressure, no heart rate, nothing like that, uh, they're considered to be VSA, vital signs absent. So then from there, uh, physicians will order different medications which can actually restart the heart. VBG is venous blood gases. This is just a diagnostic tool for certain diseases. And then the last few are going to be very common, not necessarily medical. You can see them really anywhere in life, especially if you are uh, use the metric system, like in cooking and stuff like that. So MG, again, this is where context matters. It's magnesium, but it's also milligrams. And then G is grams. Both of those are common in uh, medications, so you might give 50 milligrams of metoprolol, or let's see, 3 grams of Piptaz, which is an antibiotic, uh, so that's just the unit, it's a unit of measurement. MLs, milliliters, and then L is a liter, so those last four are common. 
and most people probably know them if they use the metric system. Thanks so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. Let us know in the comments what you want to see next, and follow us on Twitter so you can also let us know there. We like making these medical abbreviation videos, but we don't really want to use abbreviations that are never used. We want to use common ones, so that's why there's often a little bit of a gap between them. We don't want to feel like we're scraping the bottom of the barrel and using the most obscure abbreviations that exist. So like I said, like, comment, subscribe, do all that other good stuff. We really appreciate your time, and have a great day.